you wonderful people. So for today's video, just because I recently saw it, I just kind of wanted to talk about Wonder Woman. Obviously, I will be getting into spoilers, so if you have not seen Wonder Woman, do not watch this video, you know. You can always, like, watch Wonder Woman and then come back, but you don't even have to do that. Just watch Wonder Woman because it's a fantastic movie. It's fun, action-packed. It just, it's so good. That's just my quick review of it or whatever just see Wonder Woman if you haven't seen it but if you have seen it go ahead and stick around for the rest of the video if you want to like I said just going to talk about it in general as well as later on probably get into some like DCEU stuff in general that I've kind of seen bubbling above the surface but nevertheless I just want to talk about just how awesome Wonder Woman uh was and I I am so glad like on multiple levels for one the movie was just super amazing uh my favorite thing is like when you hear Ladies talk about when they left the movie theaters, they were just like, uh, like, dude, I'm ready to kick some ass right now because they were just like that hyped. And it's like that shows you how good of a movie it is. Like, that's always a good sign of a movie is like when you just feel on top of the world when you when you leave a movie super hyped like that. That is like the best feeling. And I think the fact is Wonder Woman is able to make a lot of people feel that, you know, all across the board is like, yo, that's just a good sign of a movie. But not even just that, you know, be telling. A uh, very action-packed and very compelling story. Um, I've talked about it a little bit uh, before. Like Wonder Woman is one of those superheroes I know very little about. I mean, granted, there's like only a very, like a handful of superheroes that prior to all these movies and TV shows that I actually knew about. I could probably count on one hand the amount of superheroes I'm decently familiar with. So you know, so Wonder Woman isn't alone in a whole like I don't really know that much about her. So I really appreciated uh this movie because prior to this like the only thing I really knew her from was like the Justice League cartoons and stuff like that. I think prior to this like the one thing I ever saw her in prior to this was the Flashpoint uh animated movie adaptation. So and even then obviously that's Flashpoint so that's not a true representation of Diana's character, but then again, you know, comic books and stuff like there's their different iterations and backstories. But um, I figured from the very beginning she had to have something like a god, like obviously because it's like okay, you're like the only Amazonian that's able to do what you can do. So it's kind of like yeah, you got to have like some god powers or something like that. I thought the twist was gonna be like okay, Ares is her dad. That's where I figured, but it's like oh no, Ares is actually her brother because they had the same. I thought that was kind of um, interesting, making them siblings. I don't know if that, I mean, I'd, I'd assume that's just being true to her character, but nevertheless. I mean, because that's another thing, too, is, like, she's not just one of those people that's like, oh, I just want to, you know, I've had something like, well, it's a combination of, like, I want to go out there because something tragic's happened to me. It's like, no, I legitimately want to go out there and save the world because the world of man is only evil because of Ares. And I thought that was such a, like beautiful and you know you know from a superhero perspective someone might look at it as naive but she grew up in Themyscira she only knew this life and the stories that were told it's like it wasn't until she saw it for herself what war was like what kind of the evils of man like because in her because I mean it, it kind of gave her a peek at being like oh wait when she you know thought she killed Ares and people were still fighting she was like no like Steve had to be like the fact it didn't matter is people are just bad and maybe we don't deserve you but it's not about deserve it's about what you believe you know so i just thought that was kind of, like it was just a beautiful like you know representation of like the human condition of like the fact is that humans are both light and darkness that they they can be had the potential for good at just as much as they have the potential to be evil that it's not always a god whispering in your ear yes aries kind of tilted people that way but he was already tilted he just tilted the scales to something that was already there inside of a person he kind of inspired that darkness in people and stuff like that so uh, like i said also a funny movie i love a lot of the conversations coming up and, and like after steven taking a bath and he's naked and she's like what's that he's like oh it's oh you're talking about that yeah so watch uh the whole conversation about sex um, and she's like, yeah, I've read books about it. He's like, oh, you wouldn't have to, yeah, I mean, maybe I should read it. She's like, no, the books basically is like, yeah, uh, men aren't necessary. He's like, oh, okay. Like I said, also, it's obviously a very empowering movie because it's not like, oh, uh, you know, it's not like she ever, like, she got assistance, but it's not like she ever, like, needed, needed help in a sense of like, oh, like a man has to come and protect her. It's like, nah, like anytime some stuff is going down, like Steve was like, whoa, whoa, like at first, like the alleyway uh, thing, for example, when he was like, wait, stay back. And she's, and then she kind of blocks a bullet for him and he's like, oh, okay, or, or not. And then she kicks 
ass in the alleyway. So it's one of those situations of like, nah, you stand back. I got this. Uh, probably one of the most hyped moments in the movie for me was like when they got together and pulled up that metal for it and was like shield. She jumped off of it. They pushed her up and she slammed into the building like a like a wrecking ball. I was just like, dude, that's sick. Obviously, the fight with Ares, too, just like literally a battle between gods. Because I was curious about that because she had never gotten shot the entire movie. So I was like wondering, like, if it came down to it, could she take a bullet? Like, that just, it never came up. So, once again, like, I didn't, like, that whole aspect of her being like a god, like, I mean, does she even really count as a god? Is she more demigod? I mean, did, they were like, yo, that. I like that twist too, being like, the sword isn't the god killer, you are the god killer, because only a god can kill a god. But it's like, her mom isn't a god, but maybe just because she was like the fiercest of the most like top tier Amazonian warriors, maybe, I don't know, I don't know how that works in this, because typically it's like, you'd be like, okay, a god and someone that's not a god will create a demigod, but it's like, it, the, way, the, the way they were talking about it, it seemed like she was full on god, so I guess like, when you add God into the DNA of something, it's just like that completely over overrides everything else. I also thought it was kind of interesting that basically all the other gods are dead. The only one that's possibly alive is Zeus. I mean, I say that because like, well, Ares is possibly dead, but there's always potential to be like, yeah, you thought I was dead. Our dad tried to kill me, no success. He just fatally wounded me, so. I mean, very similar wounds too because she's sitting the energy back at him, kind of pierced his chest. Seems like kind of similar thing happened with Zeus initially. So, I mean, maybe he's dead, maybe he's not. So, and that's another thing too. I had no idea the movie was so steeped in Greek mythology like that. I guess I should have known. I don't. I don't know if it falls under the same thing because I guess it, was Zena the warrior princess an Amazonian? Because I, I, I don't know. Like that just kind of it was like, huh. Because I didn't really know about, like, Ares being a, like, Wonder Woman villain wasn't something until, like, after, like, the first Injustice game came out. But still, even then, it's like, I didn't put two and two together. It's just like, oh, some dude named Ares. I didn't put it together. Like, oh, Ares as in the God of War Ares. It's a whole thing. Um, obviously, probably one thing that this movie actually got very right, and I feel like a lot of people walked away from very positively of, is the relationship between Steve and Diana. Like, the fact that matters, people felt it, like, the time they spit together, that back and forth between them. Um, it felt real for most people. I feel like the last time that people, in most people's mind, the last time they felt that was probably Deadpool and Vanessa, just superhero movie-wise. Um, I mean, that's the ones I hear the most. It's like, oh, like, that's what sold that movie for most people because that was like, a, like it, that relationship felt real. I mean, that was kind of the focus of that movie. So, but it seems like it also did, they also did a bang up job of it in this movie as well. To that point, like, the sacrifice at the end, like, won't lie to you, I start, I teared up. Like, he's sacrificing himself and she's screaming no. Literally in the back of my mind, I'm like, yo, Steve, come on, pull some trick and you're actually still like, no, you're, you're dead. And just because it went from, because that moment was like, it, it, it broke my heart. I was like, dude, it's like, he was saying like, you know, plus like her ears were a little muffled because of the whole like, you know, explosions and stuff. So she could actually hear his final words, which made that even sadder. It's like, why do you have to make this so gut wrenching? It's like, you saw the moments you're like, it's going to end with him having to make a sacrifice. He has to do it because he's a human. It's like Diana could do it and most likely might survive and everything, but it's still a situation of like, it has to be a human to kind of sh represent like humanity is kind of worth being saved. I mean, I know people don't want to probably compare it, uh, apples to oranges, but I, I always appreciate that storyline in these movies of like, you're this all powerful being. You don't have to do Jack Diddley squad. That was like my favorite aspect of Batman v Superman. Like was that one line and it was all, and it was in the trailers. And I love that line of like, you can be their whatever you can be, their savior doesn't matter. You can be their monument. You could be that or you could be nothing at all. You don't owe this world anything. And that's kind of the same a principle I feel like we get reflected in Wonder Woman as well. It's like, she has this power, she's a god. She could, you know, you know, for her it's like, oh yeah, I could deem whether or not humanity is worth saving or not. But it's like, no, it's not about who deserves what, it's what I believe. I believe in love and I believe that love can kind of conquer like anything. So it's like, I will fight for that always. Like I said, that moment, but the moment went from like sad to hype at the same time because it was like, while I'm tearing, tearing up and stuff, she kind of goes berserk god mode and starts like taking all those soldiers down and like one at a time, 
like that all at once. I mean, even then, it's kind of hype, but she tell me it's a little sad too because you know that's her acting out of rage because it's like she just lost the person she cared for deeply, the first person she's ever really gotten close to. A person that, you know, she didn't have, there was not enough time that they did, they both wished there was more time and just, it, it was just, the whole thing was just beautifully executed, the layers upon layers of like, the emotions and just what everything represented. Uh, obviously, like the ending of the movie takes place post Batman v Superman. So I am curious in that time frame between obviously everything going down with her battle with Ares till present day, like has she been back to Demascara? Because it seems like she stayed in the world of man, like so and everything so I'm curious has she gone back since or has she felt like there's no reason to go back this is where I'm meant to be so maybe that's something we'll see kind of in the future I don't know uh, there has been talks I've seen stuff here and there about sequels and stuff like that um, one thing was kind of say like oh it'll be set in the 80s and that's kind of a thing I'm curious about in general like obviously going for what does this mean for the DCU because I'm happy that a DC film is doing well granted like I've said it before and I'll say it again. I walked away very positive of the other three movies. Um, I know that I, that puts me in a minority, but uh, this is the first movie where I feel like all across the board people have been like, yes, Wonder Woman, yes, yes, yes. Wonder Woman, it's, you know, in some people's light eyes might be like, hey, Wonder Woman has now saved the DCEU. For some people, it's like, it's too late. Even if Wonder Woman is good, which it is, the fact is that it's good doesn't change the fact is that like the other three films are you know, that, there's that whole discussion. Me, I'm, I'm the way. It's weird considering the fact this. I think it's so funny. I'm a very pessimistic person, but when it comes to stuff like this, I'm always more optimistic than most people. So I went into Wonder Woman and be like, I'm going to walk away enjoying this movie. I know I don't care how most people feel about it. And so I'm just glad to see that it's doing uh, exceptionally well, you know, so. Because it deserves it. Like, all the, um, like, hard work you can tell is put in this movie, um... The tone changes. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people appreciate it. Once again, I never had a problem with the darker tone, but I do appreciate the different approach that was taken for Wonder Woman too. So, I mean, it's a DC universe. I feel like there's room for both, but I feel like you kind of have to execute it better than it has been executed in the past. So, I can, I'll give people's like you know criticism that much of a leeway of being like, yes, if it was executed a little bit better and a little differently, I feel like some people could have walked away enjoying that darker tone, but. Maybe they feel like, oh, that should be saved for a different film at a later point on time. Like the whole, like, oh, DC's trying to play the fast game of trying to catch up. Like I said, conversation all on its own. I've kind of really kind of go more in depth into it in a past video, so. But uh, getting back to what I was about to say is like, I'm curious where the whole timeline frame works for all the movies now, but where do all the other movies fall in place? Like the Batman movies are supposed to be kind of like, supposed to be prequels to Batman v Superman, I mean, well, even Man is still supposed to take place further in the past like that. I don't know if that's still being applied. I mean, there were changes they were making to the Batman movie that were going to make it more detective like, which I thought was kind of interesting because we haven't really gotten a detective Batman movie. It's just been like, yeah, stop this bad guy and stuff like, because we won't, you only typically see that side of Batman, I would assume in the comic books, but you definitely see that side of him in the animated stuff. Um, as well as the games like the Arkham games, you definitely see that more detective side of him. So I would have really appreciate seeing that in the movie. But then again, like most recent stuff, like I said, this is me just talking a little bit. I haven't read too deeply into any articles. Highly recommend if you're curious about it, definitely read into it yourself. I don't want to give you any misinformation, but there's words spreading about them scrapping a Batman movie. I don't know whether it, like in a sense of like they're kind of starting from scratch. I don't know that whether that's because of the whole like reworkings of Justice League have made people decide to kind of do that or whatever the situation is, what conflicts are where, where that's all going down. Maybe it's like because they want to do that more detective style, maybe they're like, okay, we're going to have to start from the beginning to kind of get this approach to it. I don't know. At the very least, I feel like this is a good thing that, I mean, not this particular situation, but the fact is that Wonder Woman has done such a good thing for the DC uh, EU that I feel like now... People are going to be hopefully more optimistic going forward with the other movies. I'm like I said, I'm still hyped to see. I'm definitely cyborg, but very much the Flash too. I have a very uh, Greg Miller from Kind of Funny type of feel to it too. Like I mean, I know Flash is gonna be cool, but it's like it's not my Grant Gustin Flash. Cause I, I I've come to appreciate the Flash more because of the Flash TV show. Cause prior to that, once again, Flash I liked him just like oh man, super fast superhero. But other than that, I didn't really know about him a lot until you know the tv show and now i've come to realize you know learned a lot more about the flash about different things i've heard from other people some stuff i read about it myself 
and just everything that happens in the TV show. And it's like, dude, he is literally the most overpowered superhero in existence with everything he can do. I'm very eager to see what they would do with a standalone Flash movie. But uh, more so than anything, like, also like what would go down in a Wonder Woman sequel. Obviously, the next thing in line, I would assume, is Justice League, which is kind of being redone itself because... Joss Whedon has kind of taken the helms from um, for it, so I'm very curious to see how much of a change that is. Like, you know, I wonder how much of the movie is going to be very different. Nevertheless, uh, my question to you guys is, what are your thoughts about everything? You know, talk about some of your favorite Wonder Woman moments, how you felt about the movie, uh, your hopes, and... Um, for the uh, DCEU, have your opinions on it changed because of Wonder Woman? Are you still kind of on the board about it? Like, let me know all that in the comments down below. I'm curious to hear your opinion about everything. But really, that's all I want to talk about in this video. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, look like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.